Alright, so we just got a massive chapter this week. We're picking up from the end to the last one where the Bat Devil was shown chasing Asa and Yuko. And we're seeing this bystander who's also nearby. She ends up being caught in the chase as well. And after Asa seems to stumble, she then looks over and notices there's this piece of metal that's literally stabbing through Yuko's leg. And this next part is so creepy. Asa is just watching the Bat Devil straight up eating the other lady who got caught up in the chase. But then we're hearing from Yoru here. She says to her, Asa, kill Yuko and turn her into a weapon. It'll increase our chances of survival. She's as good as dead anyway if she can't run. And then we get this shot of Asa thinking about what Yoru had just said while the bat devil's in the background still eating that woman from earlier. And of course, Asa just has to be under so much pressure, right? And then Yoru keeps talking to her. She says, don't worry, you are me, so I know you aren't sorry for killing Bucky. You're sorry that you were seen killing Bucky. And what she says here makes so much sense when you consider what we find out later in the chapter, but then she continues trying to persuade her. She says, Luckily for us, there's no one around. Let's turn her into a weapon quickly while no one's looking. On the night you died, didn't you make up your mind to live more selfishly if you got a second lease on life? Kill her if you want to live. So no matter how you look at it, it's like the situation here is perfect for the war devil, right? I mean, everything she's saying is 100% accurate as far as Asa knows, so it's hard to imagine there being another opportunity as perfect like this to make a weapon for her. But even more than that, and I talked about this in the video for the last chapter, but we've known ever since chapter 98 that Asa had admitted to wanting to living more selfishly. And this could explain why it's only Yoru talking, because she isn't saying anything that Asa could honestly disagree with. But for some reason, we're then seeing Asa decide to carry Yuko to run away together. Yoru just looks at her and yells at her calling her a fool. And I just love how everything is coming full circle in this chapter. We're then seeing Asa trip while she's running away and she just thinks to herself saying, I forgot I always trip and fall at the most critical moment. So just like how she tripped and fell when she decided to play soccer with the rest of her class in chapter 98 and then accidentally killed Bucky, we're now jumping into this flashback of a couple times in her life when this happened. But then we're getting to the big one when her mom actually died and as they're both running away from this devil attack that's just destroying the city, Asa stops to rescue this cat who can't escape and again she ends up tripping during the escape but then we're seeing her mom pick her up here essentially sacrificing herself by stopping to save her daughter and getting hit by this flying car and this goes back to what Yoru had just said about Asa feeling guilty that she was only seen killing Bucky because it's like she couldn't hide the consequences of her actions this time and if I just had to make a guess it seems like that's how Asa is able to reconcile with herself all the built-up guilt that she's ever felt because we have to remember that that Asa had said on more than one occasion that it was a devil who killed her parents, but as we find out in this chapter, Asa indirectly blames herself for the death of her mother. So in a sense, she prefers to blame someone else rather than herself, but not because she doesn't want to feel responsible to keep her hands clean, it's because the burden of the guilt is so much to bear. And Yoru actually knew this, so that explains why she makes it clear to Asa that she could have killed Yoku without having to feel guilty because no one else would have to see her do it anyway. And this is when we get to the next part in the flashback of Asa and Yuko talking. Asa says she prefers to be bullied rather than pitied because, again, she understands her guilt is because she blames herself. She doesn't feel she deserves to be of anyone's concern. But like we saw before when she was walking around the school with Yoshida and Yuko and was getting teased by her classmates, she actually doesn't want to be bullied either. So you can notice this vicious cycle to her character that doesn't allow herself to feel content because she's never made peace with all that bottled up guilt just yet. But this is what makes what Yuko says next to her so important. She says, I don't really care how you feel though. Even if my actions turn out to be a mistake, if my heart was in the right place, that's all that matters. And this is why when we see Asa pick up Yuko to run away again, she's telling herself that she wants to live like that too. That she doesn't want to live in her guilt when she could be more productive instead by doing anything that would put her heart in the right place. And it's that phrase of putting her heart in the right place that really gives her hope. It's what helps her realize that despite her selfishness or self-hate, she could literally change all of that by just choosing to do what's right over blatantly giving up. And right when the Bat Devil's finally able to catch them, we're then getting to the big moment, the moment that everyone's been waiting for. We're seeing our boy, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Denji, just send this other devil crashing into the side of the building where the Bat Devil was. And the art this chapter is just so good. I'm so thankful if Fuji 
Fujimoto decides to make the series bi-weekly over weekly if it means getting chapters that look like this, but after Denji inadvertently killed the Bat Devil, we're then seeing Asa and Yuko after it spit them back up, they're just now noticing how drastically the situation has changed. And when we see the devil that Denji was fighting, it almost looks like something you would see out of Kaiju number 8, right? Like I honestly don't remember ever seeing a devil as big as this one, but then we're getting a full on action sequence here of Denji just ripping this thing apart and then we see it actually grab Denji and just throw him across the sky mid air into a nearby building. And this thing just looks like an absolute tank, it just jumps over to where Denji landed and starts dogging on him, but then Denji somehow able to continue cutting him more with his chainsaws, but then we hear it start to talk to Denji, it says, chainsaw man, why side with humans when you're a devil? And then picking up this car with five older people in one hand and a student in the other, the devil tries to force Denji into saving one or the other and of course if you know Denji you could have already imagined what would have happened next, he decides to pick neither of them and just rushes himself forward at the devil, cutting his head in half to finally finish him. And after it's finally been defeated, we're then seeing the car with five people burn on the street next to the student who died from falling and when we see what happened to the devil, we see its corpse leaning against this building but then we see this cat who's at the top of it trying to survive from falling and coming to the next page we're seeing Denji holding the cat after having saved it. He says, there was a cat too dude. And on the news we see the broadcast announcement, it says, in yet another act of heroism, Chainsaw Man saved a cat from a cockroach devil. Alright, so it should just go without saying, but this was just an absolute banger of a chapter, right? I mean, just seeing Denji again feels so surreal, I honestly expected to see Yoshida step in to save Asa and Yuko before seeing Denji here, so this was a pleasant surprise. Also, I really appreciate seeing everything that happened with Asa in this chapter, you could see how she could relate so well to someone like Denji, but I think you could also make an argument for just how different they are too. And I think I'm definitely gonna make a separate video to explain her character in full because I think she honestly deserves it. I would say this was just masterclass writing by Fujimoto, especially with how it relates to someone like Denji. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing the next chapter for another two weeks, but like I said earlier, if it means getting this many pages with art that looks as good as this, then I honestly have no room for complaints. Again, I feel like borderline speechless after getting a chapter of this high quality. But this is where I'm gonna end the video with, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more Chainsaw Man here every week on the channel, so make sure you subscribe to stay updated. But before I end the video, I just wanna give a very special thanks to the channel's patrons, Iron Justin Nix EXP, Paranormal Beluga, and Jedi Knight 104. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And for anyone wondering, I just recently opened up a Patreon, where if you're interested, you can sign up too and get into the monthly q and I'll be doing now here on the channel. I'll be posting the next one up sometime at the start of September, so from now until the end of August, feel free to consider joining. You'd also be helping me out a lot here in a massive way and get a special shout out like this in every single video. The link will be in the description below or you could just search it yourself at patreon.com slash izanami. But other than that guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate it and feel free to comment down below what your thoughts are on this week's chapter, anything you agreed or disagreed with, and again, make sure you subscribe for more Chainsaw Man, and yeah, have a great day.